Boom Town, 2017 with John Ein, straight off the Lions Den. Are you all right? Yes, I am. Blessed love. Now, how was that? Because I know that you performed in the UK a couple of times. You performed in London and a few other little places. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's quite a stage, isn't it? It is. It is. I was actually a little early and I got to see the massive crowd in front of Toots and the Metals. That was incredible. You oh, know? It, it was phenomenal, wasn't it? Yeah. And I suppose, really, did you, you, well, you attracted a hell of a crowd. And uh, do, you, do you find a lot of love coming from the UK? You know, I do. I do. And I am not in the UK very often. So I get a lot of love and a lot of complaining that I'm not in the UK a lot. <laughs> so hopefully, you know, we're planning a UK tour for early next year. So hopefully we can touch enough of the place to, you know, make the people them get to hear the vibes. How long are you how long are you here for now? Are you jetting off somewhere else? Yes, this is the last show for the second European tour that I've been on. So we head back to Jamaica now. And then we'll maybe back on the road at the end of the year, but I may actually have the rest of the year in Jamaica, oh, which would wow. be cool. That'd be nice. Uh, the reason I asked is because sometimes people, artists, utilize their time because we have a, sort of amazing producers here. And I was going to ask really, would you look into maybe work with anybody or are you working with anybody from the UK? Well, I always, Mad Professor is always a favorite of mine when I'm here. So I actually am staying an extra day just so I can see him tomorrow. We're not going to get to go into studio, but we just completed a record together, you know, the dub version of my last album. And that did really well here in the UK on Record Store Day, so we want to kind of connect and make some plans for the future. That's amazing because he's uh, he's well without a shadow of a doubt phenomenal, isn't he? And uh, he does he's got a new album with you, Roy, and he's he hustles hard. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your bookings in Europe, so you know things like reggae gear, Rock the Tom, that kind of stuff? Do you prefer? I mean, we've been, we've talked before about how you love your jazz dub and uh, your dub music, especially. Do you think that there's a, cr a crying out sort of for more of the festival, like dub festivals? Hmm, I wouldn't know now, as you would have to tell me. I don't live here, so I don't know. <laughs> but I think when I do get to perform on these festivals, on some festivals where it's not a reggae festival, mm. so like we did Roskill Festival, where Solange and you know people like that were on that festival, and the people responded so well to the reggae. I think I was maybe the only reggae act on that entire wow. festival. So a lot of people, it's not just, oh, it's Jana and it's, this is reggae music. This is something different. And you see how electric it is for them. So I think it's definitely a good move to bring more of these festivals because this, you know, Roots festivals, that kind of vibe, it brings a different vibe than, you know, those other festivals where people are on drugs and falling on their face and, you know, <laughs> It's, it's consciousness, it's upfulness, you know, and everybody feels good when they hear that kind of message and those, you know, upful vibes. Well, there's plenty of wicked festivals out there. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about the album, Nine. Received exceptionally well over here with uh, Rodigan supported it. And uh, yeah, it's an amazing album. So what was the mission statement with the album? Uh, because obviously it's gone so well. So what did you want to try and encapsulate with the album? I think that album, mission statement, oh my gosh. Um, it really is about self, you know, just me personally. And for those who can relate to my journey, it's one of spirit and one of opening. And, you know, there's, there's stuff there for the sisters in particular. And it really is an encouragement. It is that kind of vibe. It's very introspective. It's in terms of the music. It's very experimental. It's roots, but it still takes you a little bit outside of the comfort zone of roots, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so it's, it's one of those things, it's a thinking album. It's one of those things where you play it in your car or you play it in your home when you have some time to sit and just Chill. meditate, you know? Yeah, I loved it, I thought it was an amazing album. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of amazing albums out and that sure. one was a standout one. I'm not just saying that wow. because it's you and you're here. It was a, it was a great album and uh, yeah. the, the listeners and uh, what you can tell today, the, the, there are thousands of people True, that were singing it back. it was so surprising <laughs> see, see people to see it some of those faces that were singing it, you know? That yeah. was really cool. That's amazing. And I suppose in a, in a male dominated sort of reggae fraternity, if you will, is there anyone, any artist, female artists that you're really digging? Because I, I'm no, I don't want to just focus on you know, feminism and women in reggae, but is there anyone that deserves the praise? You know, and I mean, we have to remember, you know, it's not like it's just reggae music, like the whole world is dominated. But I think another female artist who has been a great inspiration to me is Desiree. Desiree. Desiree, she's not even Jamaican. She's from St. Croix, the Virgin Islands. And her music, you know, Midnight 
is a band that has been a great inspiration to us, you know, the Rastafari youth in Jamaica. Us even, you know, the young youth who come out of Jamaica now, we listen to a lot of that as our inspiration, as our meditation music. And Desiree as a female bringing that fire, but still with the delicate vocals and she is so royal, like her whole essence is an inspiration to I. I mean, in Jamaica, Queen Africa and Etana are two females who were out there before I was, before I even decided I was going to do music in the way I'm doing it now. Yeah. And to see them confidently stepping out, and at that time they were even more militant. You see me? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> jeans and t shirt on stage and that kind of vibe. And I was so inspired by it. I'm like, yo, if I was going to do music, yeah, this is it. I'm not pretending to be nothing. I'm going out there straight, no makeup, no nothing. I'm just going to present myself. Yeah. But no disrespect to anybody who does their thing, but those women have been a great inspiration to I. The elders, Master Griffiths and Judy Moat, like Master Griffiths know can go on a stage and just rock an audience. So that again is an inspiration to know that yeah man, longevity is really what we're looking for. Amazing. So the Mad Professor, that's coming when can we expect that to come out? That's out. It's out. Yeah, that came out on Record Store Day. Which date was Record Store Day? Oh, it's about to come out in the year. Uh, What's the date? Do they have a date? No, they have a date yet. Next yeah. month. Well, I can't wait to hear it. I know, I know the VP and I'm all the guys saying it. I'm excited for the UK to hear it because it's really in the UK that I feel like there's more of that interesting dub. But it's dub and bass because obviously you've got old school dubstep and, you know, Bristol. No, it's not and dubstep. No, but you, I mean, no. No, I'm trying to say UK has a really big bass culture. Yeah. So, you know, the dub is received far well yeah yeah, yeah 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 but it's, yeah. i can't wait to listen to it and uh, thank you for giving the time to have a yes. chat with me today and uh, you know best of luck for the future respect respect